Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Firstly, I have to say thank you to everyone who welcomed me back on my last video and all the kind words. I really appreciate it and it was just nice hearing from you all again. If you haven't seen that video and you're interested in what was going on with me last year, I will leave that video linked around. So while I have been away these past few months, I have been reading, though a bit less than I usually would. Still, I have read some amazing books, including some beautiful new books, that probably aren't that new anymore. So today is going to be a big one. We're going to go through everything that I have read since last April, and I will give more details on the best ones. I've read literary fiction, translated fiction, romance, non-fiction, YA, poetry, classics, basically a bit of everything that I love to read. So let's get into it. But first things first, appreciation for my nails which are working hard to fight the January blues. First up, we have Book Lovers by Emily Henry, 4.5 stars. From the current queen of millennial fiction, this one tells the story of a cutthroat literary agent as she goes on a trip to a small country town with her sister in North Carolina. Here she bumps into Charlie, a brooding editor and her rival from the city. Cue plot twist. This is my favourite Emily Henry novel, Done. Sexual tension and millennial messiness, Nora and Charlie's interactions, their dialogue, brilliant side characters and relationships. It's also extremely booky as the two publishing professionals argue about plot lines and edits. Naturally, I ate that up. So good. So strong. White Ghosts by Katie Hale, 3.5 stars. Stillborn by Guadalupe Nettle, translated by Rosalind Harvey, 4.5 stars. This is a Mexican novel translated from Spanish, following two 30-something women as they navigate the possibility of and complexity of parenthood. One ultimately gives birth to a very ill child and the other becomes attached to a neighbour's son. So many books in 2023 explored what parenthood is and whether or not to have children. I'm here for it as much as the next millennial. This was a beautifully written and truly insightful and gripping character study of these two women women facing ambivalence, confusion and contradiction. Timely and brilliant. Shy by Max Porter, four stars. The Secrets of Hartwood Hall by Katie Lumsden, four stars. Eve by Claire Horne, 4.5 stars. This is a non-fiction book new from Welcome Collection last year. It explores the scientific development of ectogenesis, growing babies outside of the human body in machines. It focuses on various different areas of this discussion, including redistributing the work of gestation, protecting reproduction and abortion rights, and access to such technology in light of inequality. This felt quite radical and urgent and totally fascinating. Note that the book focuses primarily on the history of this topic and different case studies and examples. Rather than being a deep dive into the philosophical and ethical questions surrounding ectogenesis. Arthur and Teddy are coming out by Ryan Love, four stars. Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid, four stars. Where Angels Fear to Tread by E. M. Forster, three stars. Patricia Wants to Cuddle by Samantha Allen, 3.5 stars. Tomorrow Someone Will Arrest You by Mina Kandasami, 4 stars. The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana, 4 stars. Greek Lessons by Han Kang, 4 stars. Rattlebone by Maxine Clare, 5 stars. Originally published in the 1990s and republished last year by Daunt Books, this is set in 1950s Kansas. It explores the lives of the residents of a small black town, primarily through the eyes of young Irene Wilson as she goes through her coming of age. This is a triumph. This had every element of a modern American classic. It's about community 
and passion and love and joy. The writing is understated and luminous. It captures so much about life so expertly. This blew me away. I can't believe more people aren't reading it. Happy Place by Emily Henry, 3.5 stars. This Is Not Miami by Fernanda Melcor, 4 stars. Fight Night by Miriam Towes, 3 stars. Gwen and Art Are Not In Love by Lex Croucher, 4.5 stars. This is a queer medieval YA rom-com that came out last year from Bloomsbury YA. It tells the story of betrothed Gwen and Art who were both secretly gay and realised that they are probably better working together as allies rather than as enemies. This was delightful. I devoured this. Lex Croucher is a really fun historical novelist. She knows how to bring endearing, humorous characters to life. She knows what situations to put them in. Really fun. Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver, five stars. Winner of the Pulitzer Prize and the Women's Prize for Fiction. This is a modern day retelling of David Copperfield set in the Appalachian Mountains in Virginia, USA. It tells the story of the birth, childhood and coming of age of Demon Copperhead. It is set during the heart of the opioid crisis and it explores themes of addiction and poverty and family and love and loss and so much more. Words cannot describe how good this book is. You just have to read it for yourself. How Barbara Kingsolver so expertly and utterly convincingly encapsulates this young boy's voice, I will never know. One of the strongest characterizations I have read in a long time, one of the most sweeping, engaging tales and social commentaries, a work of genius. Yellow Face by R. F. Kwang, three stars. Divisible by itself and one by Kay Tempest, four stars. My Men by Victoria Keeland, translated by Damien Searles, five stars. This is a Norwegian historical literary novel out last year from Pushkin Press. It is a fictionalised account of Norway's first female serial killer as she flees to America in the late 19th century. This was as captivating and gritty and delicious as I hoped it would be. It's very introspective as you follow this woman's inner and outer life, tumbling towards the end, told through totally immersive, silky prose that you just can't look away from, totally brilliant. The Do's and Donuts of Love by Adiba Jaigadar, 4.5 stars. This is a contemporary YA romance that came out last summer by Hodder Children's. It follows a teenage girl as she competes in the first ever junior Irish baking show alongside her ex-girlfriend and a potential new crush. As always with Adiba Jaigadar, this was humorous and delightful and sweet perfectly plotted and paced, filled with puns and baking references and so much delicious food imagery. There's also sabotage and sexual tension and miscommunication, all of the good stuff. Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus, 4.5 stars. Incredibly popular last year, this one tells the story of a woman named Elizabeth Zott in the 1960s in America. Among other things, she goes on to become the lover of a Nobel Prize winning male scientist, the reluctant star of a popular daytime TV cooking show, a single mother and a figurehead for women's change. This toes the line somewhere between literary fiction and commercial fiction and it does it really, really well. Interesting, dynamic, well-drawn characters, serious, thought-provoking themes, but also plenty of humour and lightness. Really well-paced throughout and just really, really enjoyable. The Idle Stance of the Tipler Pigeon by Safina Danish Elahi, four stars. Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen, four stars. Breathing Lessons by Anne Tyler, 4.5 stars. This is a backlist book originally published in the 1980s. It follows the day in the life of mid-50s Maggie and her husband Ira as they drive from their home in Baltimore to a friend's funeral with unexpected detours along the way. I am a massive Anne Tyler fan. 
I couldn't tell you how many of her books I've read at this point. She is the queen of family dramas and marriage portraits and illustrations of mundane life. Her novels are always endearing and surprising and relatable. The best of reliable authors. Bellies by Nicola Dynan, four stars. The Thoughts by Sarah Barnsley, 3.5 stars. Ultramarine by Mariette Navarro, three stars. My Abandonment by Peter Rock, four stars. Carla by Colin Walsh, five stars. New Last Summer from Atlantic Books. This is a Irish literary thriller novel set in a seaside village when three estranged friends meet again in their thirties. Years ago, one of the friendship group Carla went missing and now remains have been found in the woods and two more girls have gone missing. This was totally gripping and brilliantly executed. I love it when literary fiction is combined perfectly with raring page-turning plot. It's so satisfying. This has delicious structuring, shifting between timelines and perspectives, crackling prose, interesting dynamic characters, a gorgeous setting which fits the vibes perfectly. More people need to read this. Open Throat by Henry Hoke, two stars, not my favourite. <laughs> Darling It's Me by Alison Winch, three stars. To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, five stars. The beloved American classic set in 1950s Alabama, which explores childhood and innocence, institutionalised racism, and more. This was a reread for me. This is my favourite novel of all time and the only book that I could have read at this specific moment in time after my dad passed away. Words cannot describe how we feel about our favourite books, so I will trust that you guys understand. Let the Light Pour In by Lem Sisse, four stars. Family Law by Elizabeth Acevedo, four stars. Penance by Eliza Clark, 4.5 stars. Released last summer from Faber, this is another literary thriller style novel set in a seaside town. It is told from the perspective of a journalist as he constructs a definitive account of the murder of a teenage girl by three other teenage girls a decade after the fact. This book is so inventive and fresh, comprised of interviews with various characters, historical research, correspondence with the killers themselves. It is so riveting and addictive and totally page-turning. It explores the true crime moment, the internet and fandoms, toxic female friendships, a lot of fun and a great audiobook to listen to. Breakdown by Kathy Sweeney, 4.5 stars. Another release from last summer, this one by W and N. This is a literary novel set in contemporary Dublin, following a middle-class, middle-aged woman as she walks out of her home one day and leaves her life behind with no pre-planning. This is fascinating. It really made an impact on me. The structuring and the prose are very simple. We follow this woman over the course of 48 hours as she continues to travel further and further away from the life that she and others and society have constructed for her. Very thought-provoking, I loved it. The Wren, The Wren by Anne Onright, three stars. Split Tooth by Tanya Tagak, 3.5 stars. Learned by Heart by Emma Donoghue, 4.5 stars. This is a literary historical novel that came out last summer from Picador. Set in the 1800s, it is a fictionalised account of Anne Lister, the character behind the TV series Gentleman Jack, and Elizabeth Rain as they meet and fall in love at a manor school in York. This was wonderful a true, sweeping, mesmerising historical journey. I loved the setting, the two main characters and all of the side characters felt fully formed and engaging. It isn't fast-paced or really plot-focused at all, but I found it to be full of heart and quite intense in a good way. Mort by Terry Pratchett, 
4.5 stars. This is a humorous fantasy novel telling the story of the character Death and his new young apprentice Mort. My first ever Terry Pratchett, can you believe it? This was truly delightful and in moments hilarious. Terry Pratchett is a masterful storyteller, that much is clear to see. You know as you're reading that his understanding of these characters and their world goes far beyond the pages you're looking at. I read this with a grin on my face. The Witch is Back by Sophie Morgan, 3.5 stars. Lady Orderly Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon, four stars. Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry, 4.5 stars. This is a standalone queer cozy fantasy novel following a retired female orc as she hangs up her sword for the last time and opens the city's first ever coffee shop. I am so into cozy fantasy. Give me the magic and the quirky band of characters without the 800 pages and the high stakes and the insane world building. This was just what I hoped it would be. It kept me lovely and entertained as the autumnal leaves were falling outside. My Roommate is a Vampire by Jenna Levine, four stars. Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross, four stars. The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, 3.5 stars. Freeze by Olga Dermot Bond, 3.5 stars. To Cook a Bear by Mikhail Niemi, 3 stars. Days Like These by Brian Bilston, 4 stars. Hogfather by Terry Pratchett, 4 stars. Snowed In for Christmas by Sarah Morgan, 4 stars. Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, five stars. The Beloved Elizabethan satirical social drama and Regency romance. This tells the story of the five Bennet sisters when the wealthy Mr Bingley and Mr Darcy come to town and Mrs Bennet determines to marry her daughters off. This was of course a reread for me. By far the most popular video on my channel is one I made a few years ago where I boldly confidently and unhesitatingly claim that persuasion is the superior of her novels. Let's just say that rereading this caused me to question 2019 Jasmine. Few books are perfection, but this one is. The Holiday Switch by Tiff Marcello, 3.5 stars. And finally, And So This Is Christmas by Brian Bilston, four stars. Phew. <laughs> there we have it. Those were all of the books that I have read since we last spoke. I really hope you enjoyed me running through all of them. Please let me know if you've read any of them too. Did we agree? Did we disagree? In the end, I think I had a really good reading year in 2023. I definitely found a lot of gems that I really loved. Coming up next will be my best books of the year video, so look out for that. Thanks again for watching, I hope you're all doing really well, and I look forward to chatting in the comments. See you soon in another video, guys. Bye.